Episode 6, we're getting deep, but not so deep that uh, we wouldn't mention my probably favorite guitar of all time. When your chiropractor asks you to pick out your favorite guitar of all time because you've mentioned to him that you're doing this YouTube series, you just gotta say this one. Because this is the only guitar that is called my guitar. That's its name. I've flirted with other names. I thought about calling it Maple uh, because I heard Keith Richards names all his guitars and he names them all with M names. But uh, I have a slightly different system. It's called, I just make it up. But uh, this is uh, my guitar. It's a 1985 Squire E-Series Stratocaster. I guess that's important to note because people probably have quite a few varying feelings about Squire guitars. But this is one of those super early, super high quality ones from an era just after a period where Fender had no factory in America at all. Sometime in the early 80s and they were making everything in Japan. And this anyway is what I compare every Stratocaster kind of guitar up against anyway. Uh, it's got the classic black and white and maple neck that I love because this is what I was exposed to. This is what one of the four guitars that my dad had around the house when I became interested in playing, so this happened to be the one that I gravitated to. When you want to play all hours of the night in a small house or an apartment, things like that, you just have an unplugged electric guitar and you can play anytime. <laughs> and I've played this more unplugged than anything. Played a lot of shows with it, had a lot of scars on it and all that. I was playing at a really, really hot uh, it was called the Sanford Freedom Fest around the 4th of July, and I just got off the stage. It was not covered in, of a stage at all, just a trailer, you know, in the good old days. Remember shows? Anyway, I used to play those. I, I just forgot to latch my case at all when I got off stage, and this tumbled and gave it this huge ding right here, and the low E string broke off on the pavement, so that was, <laughs> that was a first. But you know, I was a kid. I was a kid when I got this guitar, so there's just tons of kid stuff on it. Who knows? It's not that gross though, because I was, uh, you know, like OCD, obsessed with washing my hands, especially after I got home from school and wanted to just rip it up on this thing. So this goes back to when, you know, I didn't even know anything about music theory or anything. I thought, you know, you just, the root of the melody note that you're playing is the root of the chord. That's what I thought. <laughs> Maybe you'll know what I mean if you know anything about music theory. I, s I still don't know that much. But then this is the kind of guitar that brings that sort of uh, innocence back out of you, I think, and like a real raw honesty. That's why I value it a lot, I think. And just because, I don't know, I was looking at like a square of pictures, a perfect square on my camera roll of just me playing different guitars. And this was the first one and the last one, and probably in the, in the middle a couple times, because I've always come back to this in a way. It's a guitar that had been stored at my dad's house uh, a few hours away from where I live now. And quarantine hit last year, and I'm like, I, I just gotta bring that guitar up here. I can't really justify not doing that. So I did that, and uh, just working on it ever since again. It's got lots of uh, delicate fret wear on it. It has needed a setup for the last 10 years, and I haven't brought it anywhere. <laughs> so I think I should do that this year. I guess I'm probably the third owner if you count, there was someone that my dad bought it from uh, for like $250 sometime in the 80s or 90s for this and like a, a Boss Heavy Metal 2 pedal, which I still have. I'm glad I still have it because if you want to sound like metal, you know that's the number one way to do it. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is something that I'm so just obsessed with in a way. So much so that, you know, 
I know it's not hard to look at Reverb.com and just dream about stuff, but I, I look for things from this span of years on Reverb all the time, just, just in case. And people probably are reluctant to part with these, and they're getting more and more collectible, but I mean, just the nostalgia is the number one reason for me, but it's, it's a solid guitar, and it has a tiny, tiny little neck. This is the smallest neck on any guitar that I own. You know, it's all original other than I've, I wore this, this switch out so much that I had to have that replaced. I think that's the only time there's ever been any work on it. I think I was trying to lower this pickup once and I didn't know how to do it and it just fell into the body. So actually my, my stepdad helped me get like a, a toothpick in there and get it back out. And uh, I haven't messed with this since. But yeah, it's, I've had it so long that I have a relationship almost with each of the pickups. I like the bridge pickup a lot now, and I never, never used that. But, you know, I learned a lot of stuff like getting Eric Clapton woman tone, just turning these things and screwing out with all your mosquito tones and putting it through whatever. But yeah, I, it's it's been through the ringer with me. I don't know, I, I just struggle to say how much it means to me because I don't even, I don't know yet. I think if I were to play live again, which I, you know, I hope someday to do, even tour someday, which I've never really done. I think this would be the main thing to do it with. It was 2011, 10 years ago now, that I started to do a guitar log where I tried to say, okay, which guitars did you play today and for how long? And getting really scientific with it until it got just way too tiresome because who wants to have to like look at a clock and be like, okay, this is when I started, this is when I finished. But that was my way of, you know, measuring time and the value of music in a way. Now I'm just back to like, just pick it up and play whenever you feel like it. It's, that's probably a little more honest, but there's that adage like you need to spend 10,000 hours on something to be an expert in it. So if I've played any instrument that much, it would be this one. And so, Am I an expert on music? No. Am I an expert on this guitar? Probably. Because <laughs> it uh, it has absorbed just so much of my feelings and given me back its own. It's sort of like from that early impressionable age where I came from listening to like new metal music in 2000 and then like getting introduced to stuff like that my dad was really into. Stuff that maybe had, no offense, corn or anything. But just stuff that was a little more uh, I'm gonna get canceled. I'm gonna get canceled because I, you know, I still love corn. Don't worry about it. Got the Follow the Leader '99 tour shirt. Don't worry about it. But I, I just got into more, uh, I guess, harmonically rich music like the Beatles and Jimi Hendrix, especially, who played a guitar that looked a lot like this. You know, it had the big headstock, but he had his black strap for the Band of Gypsies stuff, uh, the Fillmore East stuff, etc. And that was just the best guitar playing ever. You could tell on a song like Machine Gun that this was the only guitar, the Stratocaster was the only guitar that he could wrench that much personal feeling out of. And that's kind of how I feel still. There's lots of guitars I played between this and this again, and it's just so, something so personal about it. And that's, that's the reason I keep coming back to it, I guess. I have really gotten a taste for the Squire guitars, specifically as hewing you know, more expensive things. I've got another, like, Fenders. So it just says Fender on the headstock, but I don't know. I think Squire is cool because, for one thing, the alliteration of, you know, me someday hoping to have a Squire Sean Scissorkick Stout signature Stratocaster. That's six S's. That's super Slytherin. That's super slapping Slytherin right there. <laughs> Slytherin. But, Anyway, there's guitars in this series that will have cost a lot more than this ever did or would, but this is the one that started a lot of just trends and what I like about guitars. You can take this anywhere and uh, it's less likely to get stolen, I don't know. It also started me on the, uh, the maple versus rosewood question for a, a fretboard, and I'm like, it's all good now. But just the way that this gets looking, it gets like darker and darker and you see the way that it gets pitted by your fingers and stuff. It's, it's just interesting on every guitar how it ages, but I just got super obsessed with that. So thanks Leo Fender for whatever reason you chose to just have a solid maple neck. That's pretty cool. You're not getting as much uh, 
subtlety, I would say, but it's just straight ahead. I think, again, of like someone like Buddy Holly, the impact of that. It's just just wide open. There's no secrets you can have on a, on a maple neck, which is cool. As a, you know, rosewood and things like that, they're just warmer and more nuanced. And there's value to, to it all. But this, you know, this is where I started. So on, on a Strat, I actually don't have a preference, but this, <laughs> this is where I'm coming from. So you might know why I have a lot of maple neck guitars. I've thought about it since the meaning of this guitar to me personally is, is so intense that I would, I would be buried with this, but I think that's kind of ridiculous because I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to be buried, first of all, and otherwise, someone should be playing this thing. So when that time comes, uh, I will just gift it to someone if I have the foresight. Fingers crossed. But anyway, we're, we're getting pretty deep on this one. But I think that that bears saying. Oh, uh, the birthday on this guitar, because this is the first time I've ever taken a neck off of a guitar. I always wondered, and uh, I probably need a setup even more because I did that. <laughs> and I'm an idiot and I don't know what I'm doing. Should have left the strings on for some tension. Anyway, the birthday is actually July 10, 1985. And it's stamped on there. I don't know if there's a name on there, I don't remember, but that's always a thing you can do with Fender guitars, just take the neck off. It's cool. Anyway. Uh <laughs>